Well, hello, and thank you so much, Dr. Soper and Dr. Sada, for uh, inviting me to be a part of the uh, panel here today. This is a really exciting panel, and uh, this topic is probably one that's near and dear to my heart because I, I work with Jeff Marks, and so we love to debate on these uh, topics all the time. And the Heller myotomy is probably my favorite operation. So, so um, Heller myotomy, the gold standard for achalasia management, and I have no pertinent disclosures. Um, through the course of uh, the next 10 minutes, we'll go over the treatment options, and uh, Ezra reviewed many of them quite nicely. We'll talk a little bit about the history of Heller myotomy, where Heller falls in the spectrum of achalasia management, and why the Heller remains the gold standard, although I think I agree with Ezra that it's not always that simple with all that we know about achalasia today. So if we look at the treatment options, Ezra uh, outlined them quite nicely. Um, uh, we got medications, we have Botox, pneumatic dilation, uh, Heller myotomy, um, a plus minus fundoplication, although I think most of the recent literature argues toward um, uh, fundoplication um, based on some of, the, some of the data we produced at Vanderbilt. And then we have POEM, and we'll, we'll spend uh, the next few minutes focusing on the Heller myotomy. So I kind of took the stance with the title of this uh, talk that lap heller myotomy, the gold standard, kind of arguments throughout the literature and what we know uh, from the data that would argue for the heller myotomy being the current gold standard for the management of this disease. So when I um, was looking up some things for this paper or for this uh, presentation, I think it's really fascinating to see where achalasia has evolved over the last 20 years. This is a paper from 98, so just 20 years ago. And if we looked at the treatments for achalasia, this was a nice review by Peter Carillis, and the treatments at that time that were being discussed were Botox, pneumatic dilation, and Heller myotomy with the majority at that time being through a thoracotomy. Um, and then second most common surgical approach was a laparotomy, and then a laparoscopic approach was the least common. So when you look at this review, it makes you really think, wow, achalasia's come a long way in the last 20 years. And many of the laparoscopic procedures were actually being converted to open. So I think that you know, this is where achalasia was 20 years ago. So I'm going to take you through a little journey of the last two decades and how the management of achalasia has evolved. So now, in the year 2018, the most common surgical approach for achalasia is a Heller myotomy, plus or minus a partial plication. You have POEM, and now we understand a lot more about achalasia. We understand the types. We know that there are types of achalasia, one, two, and three. They respond differently to these managements. We also have achalasia variants, and then we have this whole new concept of EGJ outflow obstruction. So there's a lot happening in uh, this space of these motility disorders, and I think you're gonna hear a lot about all of these through this session, so that's what makes it such a great session. So why is the Heller myotomy the gold standard in 2018? And this talk might be different 20 years from now. In fact, it probably will be. So the first Heller myotomy was done in 1914, and he did both an anterior and posterior myotomy through the chest to the pulmonary vein. And since that time, there's been a lot of debate plus minus uh, fundoplication. I think the randomized trial we had from Vanderbilt really speaks toward having some sort of a anti-reflux procedure being there. And then, of course, there was the uh, old school treatment of the uh, whalebone um, dilation, which was the first treatment for achalasia. So now, the, standardly, the way we do our Hellers, we use uh, standard um, five port approach in most uh, places, and then we'll um, do our door um, or a, a surgical myotomy, extending five to seven centimeters on the esophagus, two to three on the stomach, and then we finish this off with some sort of a partial plication. I think most of us would agree that these, these are the surgical approaches. Now, 2001, so just a few, few years after that uh, paper that Peter Carillis uh, presented, um, this was a beautiful Markov model put together by Erbach and his uh, colleagues. And they um, did a decision analysis using a Markov model of the optimal initial approach to achalasia. So look at the options changed well, evolved from then, being laparoscopic Heller myotomy with a partial flight 
plication, a thoracoscopic heller myotomy, so notice there's nothing open in here, which two years prior was considered the most common approach to this procedure, pneumatic dilation or Botox injection. And what, what they showed was that Lep Heller had the longest quality adjusted uh, survival at 10 years, that uh, the thoros thoracoscopic approach had the poorest quality adjusted survival, and that the lap heller with partial plication is at least as effective as the endoscopic approaches, which was primarily pneumatic dilation at that time. So then we move to the European uh, randomized trial uh, that Ezra really nicely outlined for you. Um, but these were some of my takeaways uh, from that trial that at two-year follow-up, that whether you did a lap heller myotomy with a partial plication or a peritoneal or a um, pneumatic dilation, sorry, you'd have a similar improvement in symptoms. They'd have a similar change in uh, physiologic uh, outcomes. Um, but they actually did note a much higher perforation rate in surgery, 12% versus 4%. But but they kind of discounted that, saying, you know what, but if the perforation happens at surgery, you can fix it. So it's really not that big a deal. In fact, some surgeons have heard say over the years that if you don't get perforations, then you're probably doing a lot of inadequate myotomies. So you just fix them while you're there. So I, I think that there's, the, there's a lot for us to discuss there. What they also found was that the Heller myotomy was superior in those under 40, and then one of their conclusions was that we need longer follow-up. So um, this was a very nice review in the surgical clinics from uh, Marco Patti that was uh, done just a few years later um, in 2015, okay, and he said what he concluded was at, from a very nice review of the literature in this paper, and I would encourage all of you to read it, here we add poem into the mix, and so we look at Heller myotomy, pneumatic dilation, and poem, and he concluded that the outcomes of Heller myotomy and pneumatic dilation are similar. Heller myotomy, however, is more durable, and in 2015 considered poem as promising and new, and I think Kyle's gonna share a lot more information on that uh, with us in the next talk. So then, uh, just uh, two years ago, we saw this very nice um, uh, meta-analysis that actually came out of Hungary, but a very nicely done study. They did it very cleanly with well-formed PICOS questions, starting with 319 papers, and came down to actually only eight studies that had really um, robust data that met the inclusion criteria that they had in this study. And essentially their um, conclusions from these eight studies was that Heller myotomy has better effectiveness and success rate, and that there was no difference in perforation or reflux when we compare these two interventions for achalasia. Now, POEM came on to the uh, horizon here in 2010 with uh, Dr. Inouye, and now it's considered within the standard of care for achalasia management, but we just still have a lot of questions in this space, and maybe uh, the next talk we'll hear more about these. But I think the questions that everyone has, reflux, durability, and will this complicate future surgery? So this was a nice uh, comparative study, one of the earlier comparative studies done by Swanstrom's group, looking at 100 patients weighted more heavily toward um, the um, uh, surgical approach. And at six-month follow-up, they found that the symptoms and LES pressure improved equally. They did a nice job of uh, following up with physiologic studies, not only going with symptoms. They found that acid exposure was actually comparable in these two groups, and that POEM is, and so they concluded that POEM is comparable to laparoscopic heller myotomy. And if you look throughout the literature, really safety and efficacy of uh, POEM versus Heller are considered to be uh, fairly equal. Now, this was another uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, and um, uh, this was another um, one that was just published last month, so kind of hot off the press. And what, they, uh, what the conclusions of this review were are that both POEM and Heller are effective at relieving symptoms. Okay, but POEM has a much higher incidence of reflux than the Heller myotomy in objective studies in the literature that's been published. And interestingly, they noted that the length of stay was longer with POEM than with Heller myotomy, which isn't necessarily consistent with a lot of studies uh, that I've seen. Uh, most of them seem to say that they're about the same. The other thing that's happened in the last 20 years is the advent of high resolution manometry. So now we can separate achalasia into types. We can have one, two, three, and we, then we have EGJ outflow obstruction. Now we can take a little more tailored approach to these diseases. And kind of a, a sum a conclusion in the literature is that one and two respond fairly similar to myotomy and poem, but type three um, 
uh, though Heller is better than pneumatic dilation, that poem actually may be superior to Heller because we can do a longer uh, myotomy versus the, the laparoscopic approach. Now this was a really, really nice review, and I think this brings a lot of the discussion about Heller myotomy being the um, uh, gold standard uh, to a head, and I want you to pay attention to the, the bottom row of these two um, tables. Sorry, I'm trying to get my arrow to work here. Uh, there it is. Okay, so if you look at the success rate of lap Heller myotomy with partial plication, 93% with 51-month follow-up, and you look at reflux, 7.3% in the same, um, uh, in this uh, compilation of studies. And then let's look at POEM. And if we look at the success rate of POEM, it's 88%, which is a little less than what we saw in the previous slide. But I think this is where the, the big question is, 43% reflux versus the 7% with the surgical approach. So I think this is where, where we have a, a lot more to learn and discuss. So if I look at the advantages of Heller myotomy over POEM and pneumatic dilation, I think you're gonna have decreased GERD with the laparoscopic Heller myotomy. Okay, you're gonna have uh, pneumatic dilations not done commonly everywhere, so access may be an issue. The poem definitely requires advanced endoscopic skills. Again, may not be widely available, and this may speak to um, these types of diseases being cared for at a more specialized center. The durability of POEM is unclear, and this may complicate, um, these other procedures may complicate future surgery. So in conclusion, I believe that Heller myotomy is the gold standard at this point in time in 2018 for achalasia, showing the best results, um, and um, particularly useful in patients who have a concurrent hiatal hernia who are, or who have age less than 40. I think there's still a lot more to be done in terms of long-term long studies with any of these approaches because if you go through the literature, as there's about as many meta-analyses as there are actual trials. Um, in fact, they might actually outnumber the number of trials. But as we understand more about the variants of achalasia, maybe we're going to choose a different approach depending on the achalasia type, and of course, more trials rather than meta-analyses are probably needed. Thank you.